Well, I think overall it's a really positive story. Um, it, it, I think it confirms a kind of common sense view that most people have that Britain has made great progress and that generally Britain is a kind of society that allows allows for a lot of, um, you know, social mixing between races and that we see that um, in our everyday lives. So it's great, you know, to find 80% of ethnic minority respondents, British ethnic minority respondents, um, agree with that, with that opinion. It's interesting, I think, that it's actually a larger number than the white British respondents. Um, now, the, the report also finds that um, uh, at the same time, um, you know, people are significant. I think it's 67% um, of ethnic minorities say that um, they face everyday discrimination. And um, that is a problem, but it also tells you, I think we can take take a positive, um, a positive angle on this, because it tells you that people are really quite sophisticated in their understanding. They can hold the idea that it's possible to have, you know, individual incidents of racism and discrimination without therefore leaping to the generalization that everything is systematically or structurally racist. You know, they understand because otherwise you wouldn't have them at the same time saying Britain was a great place to be, you know, generally a, a positive view. So the two, the positive and the, the positive overview and the recognition of discrete, um, you know, individual instances of racism, I think don't contradict each other. What they show is that the British generally, the respondents, uh, and I think the British public generally, have quite a nuanced and, and um, complex view on race relations and a tolerant one. Um, looking at whether Britain's made significant progress on race over the last 25 years, the report concluded that 68% of ethnic minority respondents and more, 71% of white people said that it had made significant progress over the last 25 years. In some ways, those numbers seem mm. quite small. You would think that maybe, you know, the majority of people would think that we, it has become, we have become a, a, a safer, more welcoming place to live in the last 25 years, Alka. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, um, well, the majority do, you know, do show that. I don't think we should forget that. Uh, that is what the report is, is showing. Mm. I think, I mean, as to why it isn't higher, which I think is your question, mm. I think, I mean, I, I've no definite answer. I can speculate, and I think one of the something may be uh, to do with the more recent overlay of a much more politicised, highly kind of reductive, and anti-majority version of, of of racism and and anti-racism that's been covered. You know, I mean, it, it it is being it is influential in our institutions. Both our you know our our last report and our report forthcoming report shows how it is actually quite a prevalent view in our institutions. And that is, in a way, I think, it may be causing confusion. You know, you've only got to think, two years ago, Cambridge University was trying to say raising an eyebrow was an example of racism. That's how confused the debate is in some circles. So when you've got an expanded definition of racism that includes everything and everything, and you've got a kind of quite um, authoritarian, anti-tolerant narrative around race, then I think that might be why some people are, are, are maybe hesitant or to voice their opinions or to, um, you know, to say what they really think, which is probably that, yeah, Britain's OK. You know, it's doing well.